Coming up on Mountain News this morning, we bring you the latest on the suspect in a deadly attack on a synagogue in Southern California. And the list is getting longer of states doing away with Columbus Day. More on that this half hour. Plus, spring means blooming plants and all the pollen that comes with that. We'll give you some tips and tricks on how to handle it. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 632 on this Monday. It is April 29th and I am Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. Yesterday was an absolutely gorgeous day. I was hitting golf balls out in the front yard. Today should be pretty much the same, only a little bit warmer. Brandon is going to give us a better breakdown of what to expect, including Brandon, some rain later on this week. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't keep the rain away all week, but as we head into May coming up on Wednesday, April showers bring May flowers. Let's hope that's the case. Let's talk about the forecast this morning. Some fog outside the WYMT studio, so be careful. A little bit of dense fog in spots. Same thing over Stonecrest there off in the distance. So again, just be careful as you travel early this morning. We're looking at live or excuse me, satellite radar composite over the last six hours. Not a whole lot to show you there. Temperatures anywhere from the upper 30s to the low 50s across the region. Most of us in the 40s this morning and we're soaring today later heading into the low 80s by this afternoon. Full forecast on the way here in just a few minutes. Will? Alrighty, Brandon, thank you. The suspected gunman in Saturday's deadly attack on a synagogue in Southern California will be arraigned Wednesday. He may face a hate crime charge in addition to homicide charges. One person was killed and three others were injured at the Shabbat of Poway. CBS's Laura Podesta reports. Hundreds gathered in Poway, California last night to honor the victims of Saturday's deadly synagogue shooting. We love you. We will stand with you now and forever. One person was killed and three injured when a gunman opened fire in the middle of Sabbath service. Eight-year-old Noya Dehan was hit with shrapnel during the attack. She was wounded yesterday and today she's here with us. This is bravery. Her uncle, 34-year-old Almeg Peretz, was hit in the leg while helping children escape. 60-year-old Lori Gilbert Kay was killed. Lori took the bullet for all of us. She died to protect all of us. Rabbi Israel Goldstein was shot in the hands and lost an index finger. It's going to remind me how vulnerable we are and also how heroic each one of us can be. Shortly after the shooting, this is what he told his congregation. We will not let anyone or anything take us down. Terrorism like this will not take us down. San Diego Sheriff Bill Gore identified the shooter. John Ernest, date of birth 6899, age 19. His semi-automatic rifle may have malfunctioned after firing several rounds. An off-duty Border Patrol agent attending the service fired at the shooter as he fled. Ernest later called 911 and surrendered in his car. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Now, during a search of the suspect's home, police found what appears to be his manifesto posted hours earlier on social media. Now, a gunman opened fire inside a synagogue near San Diego, leaving one person dead. The Jewish community in Kentucky is reacting to the deadly shooting. Rabbi David Wurtschafter oversees Temple Adath Israel. It's a synagogue in Lexington where doors stay locked even during worship. We've um, hired off-duty police. Um, we've invested in more technology around the uh, facility so that we can have video of what's happening here. As a response to gun violence, faith leaders in Lexington are gathering once again. They're hosting a rally on May 6th at St. Paul Catholic Church on West Short Street. Leaders will be calling on legislators in Kentucky and Washington, D.C. to pass gun safety laws. One man is in custody this morning in connection with five homicides in Sumner County, Tennessee. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation began investigating the death Saturday evening after local authorities found four bodies in a home. Another body was found in a nearby home. Police say 25-year-old Michael Cummings is in custody in connection with the homicides.
Well, President Trump skipped the White House Correspondents Dinner yet again this year. Instead, he traveled to Green Bay, Wisconsin for his first campaign rally since the release of the Mueller report. As Weijia Jiang reports, the subject came up. Is there any place that's more fun than a Trump rally? President Trump fired up a Wisconsin crowd at a campaign rally last night, bashing the Mueller report once again. The radical, liberal Democrats put all their hopes behind their collusion delusion. Special counsel Robert Mueller found no members of the Trump campaign conspired with the Russians to influence the 2016 presidential election, but he did not draw a conclusion on obstruction of justice. Attorney General William Barr did. The evidence developed by the special counsel is not sufficient to establish that the president committed an obstruction of justice offense. Barr is scheduled to testify before the House Judiciary Committee on Thursday, but there are fresh doubts he will appear. The panel plans to allow lawyers from both sides to question Barr. The Department of Justice holds the position that only members of Congress should do the probing. The committee also wants to go into a closed session if members want to talk about redacted portions of the report, which the DOJ opposes. Well, they're going to have to work that out, but he has to come before the House. He is the Attorney General of the United States. On Face the Nation, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham said he has all the answers he needs. It's over for me. He didn't collude with the Russians. Obstruction of justice in this situation is absurd. A spokesman for the House Judiciary Committee chairman says the discussions about Barr's testimony are ongoing. Meanwhile, Republicans on a panel said in a statement the demands from Democrats are abusive and illogical. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, the White House. Now, President Trump had a close encounter with the cell phone Friday while speaking at the National Rifle Association's annual convention in Indianapolis. An audience member hurled the device at the president as he walked on stage. President Trump appeared completely unfazed by the flying object. The man was reportedly removed after the incident, although it is unclear what prompted him to toss the phone. Well, Maine has joined the growing list of states doing away with Columbus Day. Now, the second Monday in October will now be known as Indigenous Peoples Day. The change passed the state legislature with bipartisan support. The move is part of an effort to confront some of the more controversial aspects of U.S. history. It's also a recognition of the historical truth that Columbus was neither the first person nor the first European to set foot in the Americas. Well, former longtime United States Senator Richard Luger of Indiana died. He was just 87. The Luger Center issued a statement saying Luger died early Sunday at the Inova Fairfax Heart and Vascular Institute in Virginia. He ran for president back in 1996, but did not become a popular candidate. Luger was a Rhodes Scholar who was first elected to the Senate in 1976 after eight years as mayor of Indianapolis. Well, spring means blooming plants and all the pollen that comes with it. It is not just a pain for allergy sufferers, though you might have noticed that nasty yellow blanket on your car. And if you do not wash that off, it can actually damage the paint on your car. So experts say do make that trip to the car wash as often as possible during this time of year. Well, it was a weekend of creativity at the fourth annual Handmade in Heinemann. The event took place from Saturday until about four Sunday afternoon. Students of all ages came to learn different old Appalachian skills. They hosted a variety of classes you could take, such as basket weaving, building your own broom or walking stick, jewelry making, and blacksmithing. Our time is now 641. Let's toss it over to Brandon and give you a breakdown of what to expect and if we might see a little bit of pollen today if you're going for a walk. Yeah, there's plenty in my nose this morning, but uh, again, we're seeing uh, that pollen index, of course, uh, I'll show you that here in just a couple of minutes, but the uh, trees are very high this morning. Buffalo Mountain, start of a beautiful sunrise here in Perry County. We go to the Mountain Parkway and Slade. Now it's a little bit more daylight. You can see a little bit of fog right there below, above the banner there, behind the banner there, just a little bit of fog this morning. So be careful if you're traveling. Temperatures, 37 Danville to 54 and wise. Most of us, though, in the low to mid 40s this morning across the region. The outlet door forecast will feature Warm temperatures, very warm temperatures for this time of the year. Average high 72. We're headed for 82 later today with sun and clouds. Will?
All righty, Brandon, thank you. Well, don't go anywhere. We'll have stories trending on WYMT.com next. As always, thank you for joining us right here on Mountain News this morning. Some of those stories. Are you stressed? A survey ranked countries on their stress levels, and we will tell you where the United States landed in the rankings. Plus, distilleries are benefiting from another year of record spirit sales. We will tell you why.